While in northern Wisconsin, we visited Al Shachka, who runs this antique fishing lure store. This is an amazing place. It's as much a museum as a store. Let's take a look. This was my idea. Again, I got a friend that ties fly rods and stuff. It's a bumblebee rod. So the handle is yellow and black, the lure is yellow and black, the rod's all rewrapped in yellow and black. That was the first nutty idea. Second nutty idea, convict rod. It's, it's got handcuffs. It's got a fly that Chris tied for me with a ball and chain. And it's black and white, like a, a, like a convict uniform. And the, the handle is black and white. And then the last one is my Old Glory Rockettes rod. So the, the, the reel is red, white, and blue. The rod is all red, white, and blue. Another friend of mine painted this lure for me. Red, white, and blue. See the eagle head on it? I like eagles. And that lure was made in Mosinee, Wisconsin. And that's where my mother was born. And this is my favorite collection because when you got an addiction like this, it's never your fault. <laughs> this is all my dad's fault. There's dad, and there's mom, and I'm the little guy in the middle. When I was that age, he bought me my first rod and reel. I've been fishing and collecting ever since. So it's his fault. He was born in 1911. Everything in this case was made prior to 1911. Wow. So this is what was on the market when he was born. But he was on a dairy farm in central Wisconsin. So they just fished with a, a stick and worms they dug up in the barnyard. That's my baby ring where the laces are. And I gave him to Chris and said, make me a musky lure. So he made a musky lure, there's big hooks on it and feathers. And some of the stuff is from real good friends of mine that have passed away. That's the Kingsbury advertising. I've been told of all the Kingsbury collectibles, that's the hardest one to find. I've turned $500 down for that. That's Ham's one with the bear. I turned $500 down for that one too. And then of course there's the ghetto Ben with a muskie, there's Rhineland, not Rhinelander, uh, Grain Belt with a muskie. And then over there's Rhinelander with a muskie. Bear and muskies just goes together. <laughs> Resident fishing license for Wisconsin. And they were pins that you stuck on yourself? Is that the idea? Yeah, that was your license. And, and don't ask me why, they did it, that's just for non-residents. Huh. 1928, 30, 31, and 32. I've asked the DNR, what did they do for 29? It's like, there's no pin, there's, <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> See, as a resident, you didn't need a fishing license. Fisherman's ruler. Look at that, goes from three inches to 33. And that's what I've done my whole life is fish. And I'm going to keep doing that till I can't fish no more. It says the voodoo combo. All right? So that's the, the chicken feet. And the, the rod is wrapped, you can see the colors, are New Orleans colors. Well, if you go down the rod a little bit, you see the beads? And you see that metal thing on there? That was from when the Green Bay Packers beat the New England Patriots in a Super Bowl. And I was there. I was there. So that's where I got that from. 
like I said, my friend Chris, he he made that, that golden pheasant fly. See this? Musky. Soda water? Look who it's made by. Coca-Cola. In the mid-40s, the early 50s, Wausau, Wisconsin had a semi-pro football team, the Wausau Muskies. So they did a promotion. I don't know if it was for one game or whatever it was, but they handed out these bottles and they were full of soda water, which obviously was Coke, but they called it musky. It's got oh, a musky right on it. And then it's got two small muskies on the neck of the, the bottle. I've seen the bottles sell for 175 bucks a piece. As of today, I've never met anyone that has seen the carrying case other than this one. Box of Al took all of these from his living room. There and to this side, I plow all the snow up. So eagles have a hard time taking off from the ground. They're big birds and they have big, big, long wings. So I big, build big snow banks there. I feed them on top of the snow banks. And then when they're done eating, they just jump off and, and fly. So it works really, really good. But I sit in a chair and I have a tripod and I spend hours just watching my critters. And look at the size of this musky lure. Nine inches by two and a half inches. Mine is nine feet by two and a half feet. He goes, oh my God, Al, you made it to scale? It's like, yep. Al also rents out these charming little cottages. <laughs> 